Welcome back to Millennial Money. This is part two of our sports card investing for beginner series. Today we're talking what sports cards to buy. In my last video, we compared raw cards to graded cards and which one could be better for you. If you're new to sports card investing, you're thinking, I don't know where to start. I don't know what cards to buy. This video is for you. So first and foremost, if you are new to sports card investing, you've never bought a sports card before, I definitely recommend starting with the sport you like the most. I have no interest in hockey. I don't know a single thing about hockey. I went to a hockey game once because my friend gave me free tickets. That's it. I have no interest in hockey, so I'm not going to go out there and try to look for hockey cards. It just doesn't make sense to me. And that's the same thing I would recommend for you. If you don't like hockey, don't look for hockey cards. If you don't like soccer, don't look for soccer cards. If you like football, go for football. If you like basketball, go for basketball. Heck, if you like wrestling, look for wrestling cards. The more you get into sports card investing and sports card collecting, it really takes up a lot of time. So why do it for a sport you have no interest in? Second thing, and this is really important too, the sports cards you buy depends on your budget. If you don't have $5,000 lying around, there's no need for you to look for an expensive $5,000 card. I've shared with you guys how I've flipped $12 cards, $40 cards, $50 cards, $70 cards, and this is all because of my budget. But the very first video I've ever done, sports card investing under $25. That was my budget, that's what I stuck to. And over time, those cards grew in value, I sold them, I was able to scale up to more expensive cards. So I would recommend you do the same. If this means you need to look for a lower graded card, like a nine or a nine and a half, there's nothing wrong with that. When we're talking about graded cards, when the value of a 10 goes up, so will the nine, so will the nine and a half. So there's no need to worry about that. If you're picking the right card, it'll go up in value and you will eventually be able to sell it. Now, another way to get a good card at a cheap price to look for some of the newest cards. In the last video, we talked about the Zion Williamson Panini Prism card. That was one of the first cards that came out for Zion. So of course, it was at the height of his popularity when he just entered the NBA. So that card is really, really valuable. But then if you start to look at like the Donruss Optics, even the Panini Revolutions or other newer cards that have just come out, they're not going to be that high in price yet because there's not a lot of them out there. A little while ago, I stumbled on a John Morant Panini certified card. I'd never seen it before, but the price was so cheap and the card looked so cool that I just went ahead and bought it for $19. Now a couple weeks later, now there's more available on eBay and check out my cards and the values are starting to go up. But because it was a new card and not too many people were looking for those, I was able to get a really, really good deal. And that brings me to my last piece of advice. Always look for the best deal. As an investor, yes, if you do get the right card, over time the price will go up. But if you're doing your research properly and looking for new listings coming up, there's always gonna be a good deal. My video, Save Big Money Buying Sports Card, great video, a lot of helpful tips I give you guys. I give you guys real pieces of advice that I use myself for getting good deals on sports cards. And at the end of the day, when you find a good deal, it's just gonna lend you more profit. If it's a card you wanna keep, great. You don't have to worry about selling it, but at least you got it for a good deal. If it's a card you plan on selling in the future, whether it's weeks, months, or even years from now, it means more profit for you when you find a good deal. I've said this before, I'll say it again. Not everyone is looking for that top dollar value for their sports card. Oftentimes, those top dollar value cards will sit on eBay. They, they'll sit on checkoutmycards.com for a very long time. So a lot of sellers know that if they price their cards a little bit lower, it'll get sold faster. There are sellers out there that will do that. So look for those sellers and get yourself a good deal. That's my video on what sports cards for you to buy. Look for the sport you're interested in. Create a good budget for yourself where you're not going to spend money you don't have and try to find the best deal. There's always deals out there. Check out my other videos. I always buy my cards at a good deal. They're out there. You just need a little bit of patience to find them. That's all I got for you. This is part two of sports card investing for beginners. I've got a few more videos coming for this series, so look out for those. If you like this video, give it a like. If you have not subscribed to Millennial Money, 
go ahead and, su and subscribe. I'd really appreciate that. I'm getting close, I'm super close to 100 subscribers. I'd really appreciate it if you're not subscribed. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. But thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day.